Hello, Washington Street. I uh, share a uh, devotion I wrote uh, about the whole situation that we face in our country today with the death of George Floyd. Uh, bear with me as my voice kind of strains, strains today. The knee on the neck of George Floyd, who lay face down in the street, gasping for air and pleading for help, is not just the knee of Officer Derek Chauvin and the Minneapolis Police Department. It's the knee of white America and our policies and institutions that perpetuate systematic racism and along with it, economic, educational, and health care inequality, and a justice system that is often unjust toward those black, brown, and other minorities. But let me even more personalize this. The knee is my knee. And most every white American who has gained privilege and power based on a system and policies that were constructed more than 400 years ago and have yet to be dismantled. The original sin, this original sin of racism, is a virus that has infected most white Americans to some degree. We'd rather think that as others, those others who are racist. After all, I have black friends. I listen to rap. I took courses in African-American history I posted my outrage on Facebook. I don't have a Confederate flag in my room. We like to say, hey, look at the progress that we've made. So pervasive and embedded is racism that we have made it an easy acquaintance. We've denied, ignored, and even pushed it away when it started to make us uncomfortable when conscience made an appearance and we glimpsed our attitudes and inactions. It's painful to hear the cries of black America, but are we truly listening? How quickly many move from outrage over the killing of George Floyd to calls for law and order. In the final analysis, riot is the language of the unheard. It's what America and that's what America, and, and what has America failed to hear, noted Martin Luther King Jr. We have been sowing the seeds of unjust laws and program disorder for many seasons, and now look what the harvest has brought us. Bishop Helder Camaro of Brazil saw a spiral of violence in society, the violence of oppression, and equality leads to violence directed at the system and sadly a violence that's directed within the oppressed group as well, which in turn leads to violence in many forms used by authorities to reestablish order. MLK Jr. further said, we do not need allies who are more devoted to order than to justice. He exposed polite, polite racism, saying that their most troublesome adversary was not the bigot of the Ku Klux Klan, but the white liberal, who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers tranquility to equality. Remember, it was the law and order folk who killed Jesus. So much of this was on display for the world to see not too long ago. As a leader of the free world, pronounced a few words condemning the killing of George Floyd and, and who didn't condemn the killing. And he said a few other platitudes and yet he spent most of his time talking about law and order. Yet his actions spoke most clearly as he walked from the White House to a nearby historic church as peaceful protesters were forcefully removed by a violent torrent of tear gas and rubber bullets and physical force, he held up holy scripture that contradicted his every move. While he commanded the forces of police and militarism, the very forces that sparked his latest outrage to secure a photo op. This infection goes to the very highest levels of power and there it is particularly hard to treat. This racism is also an addiction 
It has gotten white America power and privileges and advantages. We've gained benefits, comforts and protections that are denied, denied others. And like most addictions, we just don't want to give it up. Didn't I earn this? We tell ourselves, I worked hard and we say, this is my American dream to which I'm entitled. But our American dream is another person's nightmare. Like many addiction, it wreaks havoc, bringing dysfunction, damage, and debilitation to the whole system. But do we want to enter a recovery program? Do we really want to give up this addiction and make the changes that recovery and healing demand? It's so easy to just set up another committee to hire a diversity officer. Do we want to get well? Jesus asked the man with the disability. He asked him, do you want to get well? This man spent most of his life by a pool waiting for miraculous intervention, but he had become quite comfortable with the status quo. But it does not have to be this way, for God did not treat us racist. As humans and persons of faith, we whites have to be painfully honest with ourselves. Can we see our knee on the neck of George Floyd? Do we want to be well from this virus and get into a recovery program for this addiction? We must acknowledge, firstly, our own racism so that we can confess and repent. Confession is to be specific and not just general propositions. Repentance is not so much being sorry for the sin, but it's a change of mind and direction. Attitudes and behaviors are changed. Making amends is an order. Racist policies and structures must end. Transformative action must be taken. Inaction is complicity. There is no neutral ground. But I, we, cannot do this alone. Self-help does not get the job done. We need the whole community, church and nation to be involved. We can best be who we truly are and more when we are together. Salvation is finally communal. White and black and brown, Latino, Native American, Asian, all together. The oppressor needs the oppressed for his own liberation. Each must do their own specific work and yet needs to work to build a new home together for everyone. Talk of love without justice is empty. Worship without service and solidarity is idolatry. But this is undoubtedly a spiritual struggle. The higher power of God's grace and mercy is essential lest we slide backwards. We are dealing with principalities and powers even as we repent of our own personal sin. But what of our own Christian faith? Truthfully, most of, much of Christianity in our culture has become a matter of niceness. Never once, though, is Jesus described as being nice, nor did he tell anyone to be nice. With Jesus' counter-cultural teachings and radical lifestyle being ignored, is being only nice sinful? He overturned the tables in the temple, seeking to topple an economic and religious system that knelt on the necks of the poor. He did not seek the power of privilege. He did not seek, I'm sorry, the, the, the place of power or privilege but he took the descending path of solidarity with the oppressed, a nonviolent man. He was executed on a cross as an agitator, and his execution was violent. Jesus was killed as an enemy of church and state. Unfortunately, the scene looks similar today Yet in fits and starts, the kingdom, the kingdom of God is breaking in upon us. The acts of love and caring, the words of righteous anger, the pain and suffering of countless injustices, the grieving of untimely death, all give witness 
to its presence. We long for that kingdom, that kingdom, where none shall be oppressed and racism is not known. We groan for that kingdom, that kingdom where each person is celebrated and difference is dignified. We cry out for that kingdom, that kingdom where all have enough and shalom overflows. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's take our knees off the necks of our black sisters and brothers and let them live freely. Let them breathe again. God have mercy on us. Amen.